Hello, welcome to this video where we look at three different examples of the shell method. This particular example was um, the motivation behind needing another method. We didn't have the ability to be able to do washer with this particular question. Um, and so we're going to find out that shell is the, um, is the way to go. Um, the graph will be given to you. You shouldn't know how to graph y equals sine of x squared. It's fine. And um, we want the region that's below sine of x squared and above the x-axis. And we want to rotate that in the first quadrant. And we want to rotate that about the y-axis. So we draw a typical rectangle that is parallel to the axis of rotation. It's going to generate a shell. What we need then is the radius. And now we get that just by attaching this rectangle to the axis of rotation. That distance is x. As we move, if it's two units away, the distance is two. If it's four units away, the distance is four. And so the distance that this rectangle is off, any distance off of the y-axis is x. So your radius is x. Okay. How tall is the rectangle? The height is the function sine of x squared. So the formula for volume by shell method is 2 pi r h that you integrate. Well, the 2 pi goes on the outside. And then we have the radius and the height. The radius is x. The height is sine of x squared. And the bounds are 0 to rad, x, uh, rad pi. How are you going to integrate that? Sine of x squared times an x. A product, you would first think integration by parts, but there's an easier way. The inside function is a polynomial with a degree one higher than the outside function. It's a single term. You're going to set up this by u sub. Let u be the inside. Let u be equal to x squared. The derivative is 2x dx, and so 1 half of du will replace x dx. The x dx replaced with half du will have the sine of u. What function has the sine of u as its derivative? Not cosine u, but negative cosine u. And don't forget the half is in there. All right, that was a little side work to help us figure out that this guy's antiderivative is negative one half, the cosine of x squared. Ready to put in the root pi, ready to put in the zero, and we'll find out that we square that. So root pi quantity squared is going to be cosine of pi, and then cosine of zero. Cosine of pi is a negative one. Cosine of zero is a one. They don't cancel, they're subtracted. And now there's a negative pi on the outside. The two and the half canceled each other out. There we go. The answer is 2 pi. That's the volume. Let's see another example. In this example, what we have is the, the uh, y equals x squared plus 1. y equals 1 and x equals 2 is our region. And we're going to rotate that around the y-axis. So in this next set of examples, I want to contrast one method versus the other. So I like to do it by writing uh, the, the sort of setup for both and then figuring out which one to do. So in that case then, to get the setup, we really need a good picture. So we have a good picture, but we want a second picture, a carbon copy of it, where in one of them, we draw a rectangle that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. But in the other, we draw a rectangle that's parallel to the axis of rotation. Uh, in this question, the axis of rotation is the y-axis. Okay, there's definitely a gap between your region and your axis. And so um, if you're going to draw the um, rectangle perpendicular, it's going to be the washer method. And we draw the rectangle um, that is parallel, it's going to be the shell method. All right, washer is going to be a rectangle that's perpendicular to the y-axis, while shell is going to be using um, a rectangle that is parallel to the y-axis. If you have a rectangle that is horizontal, it gets moved upward. That's y changing. So the washer method should be done in y. 
shell has a rectangle that's a vertical rectangle it's going to be moved from left to right so that's going to be done in x it's the orientation of the rectangle that dictates to you what variable you'll be integrating in well if you're going to be integrating in y you're going to have to flip all your equations so if y is equal to x squared plus one you can subtract the one and take a square root you get that x is the square root of y minus one that's the that's the horizontal distance off the x off the y axis that'll get you to the parabola okay in washer you got to have an outer radius and an inner radius how do you get the outer radius you go from the axis through the region well that's going to always be the same that's going to be two then you have an inner radius who goes from the axis just up to the region to the parabola and that's that root one uh, y minus one and so the lowest y that you encounter is one and then the highest y that you encounter is five when x is two y is five so the integral is from one to five Square the outside radius and square the inside radius. Subtract those two guys, and you're, and you're good to go. That's the setup for washer method. Let's contrast that with the setup for shell method. In shell, you need a radius and you need a height. The radius goes from the axis to the rectangle. When you're doing shell and you're doing it with the y-axis as your rotation axis, that radius is always going to be x. And the height of the rectangle is a difference of two functions. You can't just use x squared plus one that's from the y-axis up to the parabola. You take that and you have to subtract off the distance from the x-axis up one unit. So we get x squared plus one minus a one. It's just x squared. When this happens like this, that's an idea that you could have shifted everything down and had the variables come out to be a little cleaner, but, but we got it anyway. It's fine. So we have it all set up here. It's a nice setup. We have X, who's the radius, X squared, who's the height. Remember the formula, 2 pi radius times height. So that's a nice integral. X goes from 0 to 2 as you move from left to right. So if you had to choose between these two, I would have to choose the shell method. Most questions can't be done in both ways. This one is. One way is usually a lot more um, difficult than the other way. But here we are. We have them both um, as far as the setup goes. And I'll let you, you know, go through the details of the integrals. Um, it turns out that they're both equal to 8 pi. All right. 8 pi for the one. 8 pi for the other. Double check it for yourself. Um, the, the washer method is a bit... A bit more difficult as far as the execution of it but 8 pi is the answer okay I want to change this slightly in the next example my rotation axis is y equals 1 I'm sorry uh, my rotation axis is the y-axis okay I'm gonna keep that but um, the lower part um, instead of being y equals 1 I'm gonna lower that to the x-axis things change slightly the region changes and it's going to change your calculation. Okay. Everything else the same, but we're going to lower that to be the x axis instead of um, y equals 1. We'll have y equals 0. Carbon copy, rectangle perpendicular to the axis. But sometimes what I need you to notice is that when you have it set up where the rectangle, draw a couple of them in, because see, if ever one end of a rectangle switches curves on you like this, it actually means you're going to have to require two different integrals. In this one, the, the gap happens above y equals 1. So for that part, it'll be washer. There's a gap between your region and your axis. But at the bottom part, there's no gap. That's going to be disk. Um, the rectangles are horizontal. So these have to be done in terms of y. When we go to shell, however, we do a, um, a rectangle that dip generates a typical shell. It's parallel to the axis of rotation. And so 
that vertical rectangle then means you're going to be an X. All right, let's jump over to the washer. Uh, the outside radius for the washer is the same, you know, distance to, while the inside radius changes based off of the parabola and that distance we had found before to be root of y minus 1. That part's the same. The disk part is different, where you just have to find the radius, and it's going to be constant. It's going to be 2. And so we have the one part, which is washer, and the other part, which is um, just disk. The washer part we actually solved on a previous question, and now we're adding this disk on there. When it comes to shell, you just need a radius. When it's the y-axis as, as your axis rotation, the radius is just going to be x. And then the height is the function height. This time, we don't have to worry about subtracting off. It's the actual x squared plus 1 distance. So the volume used in shell is 2 pi, the radius times the height that you integrate. And so that's a nice integral there. If you had to choose between the two, you would choose the, the shell. Um, hopefully you make the choice early enough where you won't be wasting time. Um, if you had done the previous question, you know the answer to the washer part is 8 pi, and then you could just consider yourself adding on a cylinder of radius 2 and height 1. That's 4 pi. So the answer is 12 pi either way. Check the second integral, and you'll see. All right, All right that's enough for this video. In the next video, we do a Another example of this washer versus shell argument, and um, and then we'll have uh, a couple more videos after that. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakai Remember, and uh, I'm here to help you through this journey. Thank you.